The word billionaire didn't even exist until 1844. 50 years later, we got multi-billionaire. And for the next 127 years, that was enough. But in 2020, while the working class faced near record unemployment during the pandemic, the wealthiest Americans faced a different problem. Some of them had gotten so rich, there was no longer a word to describe just how rich they were. That's why today I want to bring you one of the newest additions to the English language, centibillionaire. People with $100 billion or more. Now, what's it like being one of history's first centibillionaires? It's hard to even imagine, but let's try it by comparing them to the less fortunate, by which I mean just regular billionaires. <laughs> If you're a regular billionaire, you can afford a private jet. If you're a centibillionaire, you can afford a brand new Gulfstream jet every single day for more than 10 years. Not sure what you do with a new Gulfstream jet every day, but maybe give one to each of your closest 4,000 friends. A regular billionaire would struggle to buy their own professional baseball team. It's sad, I know, but a centibillionaire could easily buy every team in the entire major league. If you're a regular billionaire, you can donate to your alma mater and get your name on a building. If you're a centibillionaire, you could single-handedly give every teacher in America an $8,000 raise for five straight years. Of course, that's not all you could do. $100 billion is enough to wipe out all the medical debt in the United States or provide permanent shelter for every homeless person in America, or buy COVID-19 vaccines for the entire world. Basically what I'm saying is $100 billion is a lot of money, more than two and a half million times what the average American worker makes in a year. So here's the big question. Are these centibillionaires so rich because they work two and a half million times harder than the average American? Are they really a hundred times smarter than the typical billionaire? Personally, I don't think so. The reason for the rise of centibillionaires is that for decades, wealth hasn't trickled down. It's gushed up all the way to the very top. And that's not an accident. As it turns out, the system that the super rich themselves carefully crafted and lobbied for benefits the super rich. And while you may not own more private jets than your average and a billionaire, you probably do pay a higher tax rate. And thanks to legal loopholes and the Trump tax cuts, when the wealthiest Americans die, they get to pass on most of their centibillions to their kids, tax free. We've got two choices as a country. We can tax the richest Americans fairly and invest that money in ways that benefit all of us, or we can keep doing what we're doing and watch as Senate billionaires get even richer while the rest of us get left behind. If you think wealth and power are too concentrated in the hands of a privileged few now, just imagine what a few more years of trickle-down nonsense will bring. Of course, it won't be all bad. At least trillionaire is easy to say.